Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Data Science with Harshit. So this is the third episode of the Linear Algebra series where I am going to talk about identity matrices and inverse matrices. And we are going to see how we can transform and solve system of linear equations using inverse matrices. So without any further ado, let's get started. Identity and inverse matrices are two very important concepts and we're going to be using these concepts uh, later on in the series as well. So if we talk about identity matrix first, so this is a special kind of matrix that we have and uh, it is filled with zeros except the main diagonal which is filled with ones. So special property is any matrix or a vector when multiplied with an identity matrix it stays just the same so it's kind of like uh, one uh, in scalars so anything that you multiply with one stays just the same so in the n dimensional space when we talk about matrices any matrix or a vector when multiplied with an identity matrix stays just the same there's no change that can be seen so if you look at this example over here so we have a three by three matrix identity matrix and uh, it is multiplied with this x vector that we can see which has a shape of three cross one so we have uh, our multiplication rules uh, being satisfied here so when this matrix this identity matrix is multiplied with this x vector you see that the output stays just the same as the x vector so that was about identity matrix, the concept. Now we're going to look into how we can code this using NumPy library. So I have imported the NumPy library as you can see over here. Now I have a special function to create an identity matrix. So this is np.i and I have to pass the dimension. So I want a three cross three. So when you run this, you get a numpy array of uh, a 2d array which is basically your identity matrix so you see all the diagonal elements over here are ones rest of the elements are zero now if you look at this example that we discussed anything that may, uh, gets multiplied with the identity matrix stays just the same so if we test this in the code so let's create uh, an x vector np dot array pass in uh, the vector let's say two then five then seven let's say so this is my x vector that i have created oh sorry yeah i have to add the opening and closing square brackets so yeah i have my 2d array ready so this is my vector as you can see x vector is ready now i have my identity matrix as well so i equals okay so this is my identity matrix which is ready now if i do i dot and then pass on my x vector and store the result in c let's say so if you look at c so you see that my c my x vector which was 257 it has stayed just the same instead of just the floating point number so that's that's nothing to worry about so you can see that anything that is multiplied with the identity matrix uh, stays just the same and we can manipulate this notion over time to look into a few more concepts so we're going to talk about another example so here we see that we have a matrix a and it is being multiplied by an identity matrix of uh, 3 cross 3 and uh, now this visual or this graphic basically suggests that we won't see any change uh, in the matrix A. The output of this multiplication of this dot product would be the same. So let's try and confirm this in the code. So let's quickly create our E matrix np.array. 
so our matrix was uh, 4 cross 3 so let's quickly do that create a matrix 1 2 3 and then at last 10 11 12 so this is our matrix A a 2D array A which is of 4 cross 3 that's right so now if we multiply A with our identity matrix as defined above in the previous example. So we're going to use this 3 cross 3. So the multiplication rules are basically being satisfied. So when we do this, it should return the same. Yeah. So you can see that this dot product, when I multiplied my matrix A with the identity matrix, you see that we have got the same results. Now, an important topic here is inverse matrix. The inverse of a particular matrix is basically denoted by A raised to the power of minus 1. So this is the notation. And it is basically the matrix that results in the identity matrix when it is multiplied by its original matrix. So when I multiply A by its inverse, that is A inverse multiplied by A, I would get an identity matrix as my output. So it means it kind of means that you know if you try to transform your space by applying a matrix A uh, to that particular space, so you can go back to the original state of that space by again multiplying it by inverse of that particular matrix. So it provides us a way to cancel our transformation. The application of this can be seen in convolutional neural and networks as well. So where we try to transform our images, we try to enhance our features. So let's quickly check this and confirm this in code. So let's quickly create our matrix A, np.array. And then I have my first row as 3 comma 0 comma 2 and then I have another row which is 0 comma alright so I have my A matrix ready I need to create my inverse so the NumPy library has this linear algebra module which contains this inverse function and all I need to do is pass on the A matrix that I have created so this I can call A n inverse now under so let's look at what do we have in a inverse so this base this basically is my a inverse now what should happen is according to the rule if i multiply my a inverse with a so let's do that so a inverse dot so it should return the identity matrix so if we run this so you can see that I have retrieved an identity matrix. So this again is uh, raised to the power of minus 17. So it's a very small, very uh, negligible value. And you can see all the diagonal uh, elements are one. So this is bas this basically confirms our proposition, which is when we get, when we multiply a particular matrix with its inverse, we get an identity matrix. And that's the property of inverse matrices. They help you get back to or cancel out the transformation that you have applied to a particular space. Now, when we talk about solving system of linear equations, our inverse that we have just uh, learned about, this can be used to solve equations. So let's say I have this equation ax equals b. Now the intuition behind finding out the value of x is that I can simply multiply a inverse on both sides of the equation. And I know that whenever I multiply a inverse with its original matrix A, now that leads to identity matrix. And this is how I can represent the LHS then. So if I know the inverse of matrix A, I can multiply it on both the sides. A inverse multiplied by A would then give me identity matrix. And we know that anything multiplied by identity matrix remains as it is. So this would simply become x equals a inverse into b. 
Now, let's say I have the system of equations here, y equals 2x and y equals minus x plus 3. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to represent it in the format as mentioned on the right hand side. So we need to first have this system of equation in this particular format. So I've moved all the variable terms on the left hand side and the constants on the right. So now I have it in a format that I can uh, go about solving. This is basically how I can represent my system of equations into matrix format. First of all, I have my A matrix, which contains the coefficients of all the unknown variables that I have. So we have X1 and X2, which we want to find out. So this is how I can uh, basically separate. So this two system of equation, the solution of this uh, system of equation would be a point basically we are trying to find out where these two lines so these are linear equations so these would represent lines so I want to find out where these linear equations uh, would intersect each other so we want to find out that intersection point what would be the coordinate of that point now I can I have my a matrix which is coefficient I have my b, b vector which is basically the constant terms and if I multiply my A matrix with my unknown vector, which is X1 and X2, so that this matrix format represent our system of equation that we have uh, chosen as an example. So let's look at this uh, in code. So let's first create our matrix A. This is A and P dot array. And as per what we decided, A is okay we have two comma minus one and then we have minus one comma one all right so i think two comma minus one one comma one yes so i have my a matrix created then i want to find out the inverse of this matrix so a inverse again using the linear algebra module and the inverse function pass it a look at a inverse all right so we have uh, our a inverse and our a matrix ready now what we need to do here first let's also create our b vector so this is our b vector np dot array and our b vector is simply zero comma three let's look at b all right so this is also fine so basically our x equals our a underscore inverse multiplied b with b so this is what we need to do so if we want to find out x x is our vector basically the unknown vector so we have calculated our a inverse let's multiply it with the b vector that we have created and let's look at x so we have found out the value of our two unknowns the unknown vector this is one and two so we have the value of x as one and y as two so the point of intersection of these uh, of these two uh, equations uh, the linear equation is one comma two so we can also plot these two equations and confirm if this is the right solution so how can you plot we can use the matplotlib library so let's quickly plot some random numbers let's say I have created this uh, array from minus 10 to 10 this is my x that I'm creating some x points then accordingly I have one equation as 2 star x so let's call this y1 and then for the second system I have y2 equals uh, what was this was minus x plus 3 so this was our second equation so I have calculated y1 and y2 so if you want to take a look this is my y1 so these are the values that I'm going to plot on a chart so let's first import matplotlib as plt okay then i am going to create a figure all right 
plt dot plot if you don't know about matplotlib don't worry i'll create a course on data visualization where i'll be covering all of these for now you can just simply follow me plt dot plot x comma y this is y1 and then for the second plot we can simply do for the second line we can do x comma y2 this is for our second system so we have created some random numbers from minus 10 to 10 and in order to find out these values to plot our lines i have calculated y1 and y2 for the two linear equations i am plotting these two lines and let's do plt dot show and run this so this is basically the two lines that we have so this is y equals 2x and this is y equals minus x plus 3 and you can see that this point would simply be somewhere around 1 comma 2 which is our solution so we can do something uh, to make it more visually clear we can do plt dot xlim we are setting the limits of our axis 0 comma 3 and then do the same for y axis as well so you can see that this is our plot and to make it more visually clear we can simply do plt dot grid true we want a grid to show the intersection so you can see that one and two this was the solution that we saw and this is where the two equations will intersect we are going to look into uh, more depth of solving system of linear equations in the next video so for now you can just go on and practice these concepts in in this particular notebook i have shared the link to this notebook in in the comments down below so that was all about uh, inverse matrices and identity matrices and how we can use them to solve systems of linear equations and in the next episode i am going to dive deeper into systems of linear equations type of solutions that we have and talk about linear dependence and span of a set of vectors so we're going to dive deeper we're going to see how we can visualize these systems and uh, i'm going to put down some links to a few books that you might want to refer to and you can go ahead and you know build over this foundation that i've provided and uh, till my next video stay tuned and keep learning data science with harshit